Masters. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. What is going on, folks? My name is Jacob. Uh, today, we have the queues up a little bit, making some wild moves in the past, just honestly, year to date. Um, we'll see what happens today. Obviously, yesterday we had a big bump up. Let's move to three days. I mean, this is pretty wild moving. So, we have some volume right here, really shaken up. Obviously, really big volume coming up to this kind of mini consolidation point. So, that's pretty neat. Um, we have the Dow up 44 points, NASDAQ up 20, and then the Russell's up 0.31. We have that about five points. Okay, so today I want to look at John Deere. You never bet against the tractor man. Sometimes you do, but in this case it would have been a bad move. Um, so they came out pretty strong today. Not an extraordinary volume, but we had a nice pop-up on them. Let me see here real quick. So this easily topped the fiscal second quarter earnings estimates early Friday, uh, despite worries about farm prices. And that's true, right? And economic growth is a lot of the, the whole agricultural industry is pretty fascinating. And I don't have my head fully wrapped around it. Um, but, you know, anyone who's looking into this can see there might have been some issues with it. However, it rallied pretty strongly. Um, for Q2, which ended in April, deer earnings uh, were forecasted to grow 26% to 8.58 a share, $8.58. Uh, total revenue was seen rising nearly 20%. And in fact, it jumped 42% to 965 a share, and then revenue swelled to 30%. That's pretty impressive. And, uh, you know, these tractors are any of this kind of... Um, <laughs> like, for some reason, I get recommended on YouTube, I get recommended, like, really strange videos, and one of them is, like, just farmers uh, making little shorts, and they talk about their tractors and talk about their equipment. These things are extraordinarily expensive. And so there's a whole little finance segment that just exists to help farmers get these things, and I'm sure that diving deeper into that would probably enlighten us a little bit of, of why this exploded so much. Uh, but regardless, interesting to kind of see that. Um, as well, people were talking about in the den, and again, this is a war of attrition, you got to get in the den, and I'll keep reminding you constantly, um, was Wise Key International Holdings. This is obviously very small cap, um, but exploded today on volume. And I was like, what is Wise Key? I've never heard of this before. And it's interesting because it ties in with what we were talking about yesterday. And they are a cybersecurity firm that works on um, connecting the Internet of Things, the IOTs. And the reason why this, that I was really discovering, the reason why this had any kind of big explosion, these guys are, uh, excuse me, um, headquartered out in uh, Zurich. Uh, they operated with a company called FASA Systems, which is like a satellite company. Um, and so they're launching about 80 satellites, right? And this is gonna help connect IOT, um, this is, these are apparently pretty advanced satellites. Um, it says, uh, it's they're called the YSAT satellites. It's a security IoT hardened nano satellite designed to further drive down satellite costs for IoT applications. Uh, as more satellites are deployed, YSAT and FOSA will offer lower latency time, so just communication, uh, reaching near real-time data <laughs> with the 80 satellites projected. I mean, listen, the IoT... Uh, market is huge. I don't think it's spoken about enough. Is it necessary to have your washing machine communicate with the internet? I don't know. Uh, but it is a thing, and uh, there's a lot of money in it. So there, it's you know something you can't really ignore totally if uh, you want to get a slice of the pie, at least in uh, the, the virtualization of everything. Uh, but pretty neat movements. These little stocks obviously move so uh, extremely. <laughs> Uh, pretty big amount. Okay, as well, I want to look at Lulu because Lulu kind of got smacked today. Uh, a little bit of smoke. Obviously, if you look on it, like on a year to date, let's see here, it looks pretty. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm looking on it a year to date. 
if you're taking like this, right, like the past three months, it seemed pretty substantial. If you move it out to a year to date, you can see, you know, we, <laughs> this is on low volume. And, and really I was, I was looking around and trying to dig in because this company is solid, right? Every girl I know uses these, even guys that I do sports with, uh, they wear a Lululemon. Uh, this, this company has an extraordinary amount of dominance. Uh, so I was curious as to why we even saw this, and I think it really a lot has to do with, with Foot Locker getting smoked. Um, I think Nike's down as well, kind of on the same concept. Yeah. On the long, though, Lulu is such a solid company. The one thing I did see uh, is there was a, and going back to TikTok again, um, apparently a very popular TikTok user, uh, she came out with whatever their videos are called, saying that this company sells duplicates and they're, they're exactly like Lululemon. And you know, we're seeing a lot of that now, especially with, uh, if you guys have seen advertisements for that Chinese company, Temu, uh, it's like, a, the basically the design is it's like factory straight to your doorstep. So factory in China that produces whatever kind of tech or uh, you know, just household goods. And instead of going through a middleman, which are, you know, the American middleman, which will like upcharge you an immense amount, they're going to send it to you right to your doorstep. So one of their big things they're doing is they have the Samsung headphones that they're selling for $2 instead of 60 or whatever. And I think this is the same kind of concept. Um, so a lot of duplicates are getting out. Obviously, this got a huge amount of attention. Um, I don't know if that's really why this stock did today. And I think it has more to do with like Foot Locker and everything and kind of like the Athletica uh, kind of segment, just being kind of down because of, of Foot Locker. Um, but what's interesting is Lululemon's response to these duplicates uh, becoming at least somewhat popular. And so they're doing a, one of the a new kind of cultural phenomena, and maybe it was popular in the past, um, but they're called swap meets, right? And um, I know sometimes guys do it, but a lot of women I know do this, right? And they'll go and they just basically switch clothing, right, with other women. Um, and it's a cheap way to kind of diversify your uh, your wardrobe or whatever. And so what they're doing is they're doing, Lululemon is creating a swap as well. And you bring your duplicate and uh, they'll give you the real Lululemon. That's an interesting way to kind of like maintain dominance. Of course, it's not a long-term thing because what you're going to get is people buying duplicates just to get the real stuff. One interesting way, I feel like a company has dealt with this before, like competitors, excuse me. <clears throat> <clears throat> Gotta love those allergies, folks. Um, with Starbucks, right? And so what they did is they would create uh, what looked like mom and pop or like, you know, hipster geared uh, cafes down the road. And in fact, it was actually just Starbucks goods that they were selling and it was run by Starbucks. And, uh, you know, I, I think on a long term, if this actually becomes a serious issue, uh, Lululemon could do something like that, but really on the, on the whole, their, their C-suite is so competent. I mean, it is amazing to see how much this stock has blown up, um, especially um, in, in a pretty saturated market, right? I mean, you have Nike, you have like Archaeopteryx, you, you have a bunch of different kind of competitors in this market, and Lulu has continued to show that they are dominant, I think the stock's cool. You're still getting kind of consolidated movement on really low volume after this major explosion. I wouldn't get in, I guess, but um, it's still a pretty solid stock if you're holding it. Folks, stay tuned. We will be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at tfnn.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. What's going on, folks? Yeah, so we had a caller over the break, went and take a look at Newmont. So Newmont uh, just is, is, is basically acquiring uh, Newcrest, right? This has been insane. They're going to be one of the largest, if not the largest, I think, uh, gold producer. Um, Newmont has kind of been underperforming, maybe not underperforming, but they're down 28% over the year. And that, for a lot of other stocks, at least like in the gold sector, is definitely kind of underperforming. Um, so the way that I look at this, right, and again, if you want like some real in-depth kind of look at these gold stocks, I would honestly go to our man Tom, because uh, he's just been doing it for so long. Um, the way I see it is like it's not out competing things like EGO, El Dorado. It's not out competing things like um, AGI or anything like that, right? Um, they have a, I pulled up their first quarter call, right? And it said that it's on track to meet its attributable gold production projection of 5.7 to 6.3 million. I think things have been so strange in the gold market. And currently, you know, we're seeing a pullback, especially too, with this increasing dollar. As far as like the entire like, share of the market that Newmont now possesses with this Newcrest acquisition, it's obviously massive, right? It just depends with kind of how we see gold moving. If the dollar continues to go, go strong, I mean, are you gonna see an actual increase in uh, the gold market right now? Like, no, right? Does that necessarily add to them ramping up production or acquisition of gold? Uh, not really, right? That's kind of my look on it. Uh, again, you had high volume, we're reaching back, and we, we plunged through that last day with volume, at least on the year-to-date chart, and uh, sitting steadily the past two days below. Um, not on any extreme volume whatsoever. We'll see if that kind of retests the 45 area. Um, as far as the fundamentals, fundamentals go, again, this acquisition is massive, and uh, they're, they're huge. They're huge. I think these guys, probably because of that, they get affected very heavily 
by the way the rest of the gold market is going. Again, you have the GDX down pretty significantly and everything else is getting, you know, actually I also want to see dust as well, which is the, the short on gold. So we don't have any, so we have an upward movement the past few days on this, obviously, right? Because the rest of the market, uh, this is this is inverse to the price of gold. So, you know, I would say, I would say stay tuned to see what happens, at least if it retests that level, uh, the 45, and then also, um, again, defer really heavily to Tom on this, because he knows everything I know, I'm learning from Tom, um, and it's just been a wealth of information, and uh, if you want anything a little bit more in depth than I can provide right now, I would strongly recommend you know, shooting him an email um, or giving him a call as well. But that's what I have for Newmont and looking out on it. Again, the big winners have been like EGO and AGI recently. So that is what well, I have. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for calling in, Earl. Seriously. Okay. Let, is, let us take a look quickly. Then I want to pull up for you guys. Obviously, we have some crazy stuff going on <laughs> regarding the, um, the debt ceiling. This is an interesting chart. I won't spend too much time on it, but this is treasury cash. And we're about, Yellen has this thing where you want to be at the 50,000 mark. Okay. Uh, actually, 50,000. Uh, the, the, the 50 mark on it. Um, and we are, we are hitting that. So we'll see what happens. This is like a day spending away from hitting the total reserve that Yellen wants. Um, it seems, again, we always approach these points, but everything kind of gets salvaged last minute. Um, this is cool too. <laughs> it depends who you are, I suppose. Um, but just understanding really what's going on with it. This is the commercial real estate and this is the prices downturn. And these things are getting smoked in a massive way. Uh, the CRE prices have slid for the first time since 2011. Uh, so commercial real estate has tumbled into a downturn as property values are sliding. Uh, this situation worsens because small and regional banks are the biggest source of credit to CRE owners. Of course, if you've been listening to TFNN, you know that already, right? Um, Moody's Analytics is not very, uh, doesn't have a very positive outlook on this. So it said courthouse records of transactions revealed CRE market dropped about 1% in the quarter, led by multifamily residences and office buildings. Um, their chief, which is Mark Zandi, warned that lots, quote, lots more price declines are coming. Um, according to Lisa Shalit, chief investment officer at Morgan Stanley, she believes the peak to trough CRE prices decline um, of about as much as 40%. And that's worse than the great financial crisis. And it's going to be interesting to see how we, like, really adapt to this. I think, you know, you have some major industry guys, Elon Musk, notably, um, Jamie Dimon, who are so opposed to this at-home work, but let's be real, like, I think that we're gonna see the hybrid market stay, the, hy the hybrid style of work, right? Now, you might get more like, how should I say it, like, I would say as we, we continue to move forward, right, you're probably gonna get a higher percent of the ratio being in office, um, but people are fighting hard about it. And I can see, say even from like anecdotes that I have people who, uh, friends that I know or family members who worked at home and they're rallying so hard to not go back into the office and maybe they've been forced to, but it's now like a half and half, right? So you get three days in, you get two days out on it, right? Does it make sense to really pay rent on something like an office space when you're there for you know, three fifths of the time, like probably not, right? I do see an increase probably in shared market space, excuse me, shared office space coming out. Um, but we'll kind of see how that shakes out. And it's as complicating matter as JP Morgan's analysis, again, showing small banks have accounted for the lion's share of CRE lending relative to larger banks. Um, and that's shown in February, 2023. It's just, it's immense, right? Large banks did not do this. They had stayed stable since January 15th. Um, and the amount increases, you know, basically coming from, from the small banks. And that's going to be a major issue too, especially when everything's maturing. And how much of it is really going to get refinanced? How difficult is it to refinance that? Um, Moody's also said regarding this, like 84% of maturing office loans uh, are going to uh, face refinancing challenges in 2023. We'll pull this over here. 
Nearly 90% of commercial mortgage-backed securities, office loans maturing in 2023, will face refinancing challenges. Um, while the fundamentals of the economy remain strong, eh, commercial real estate sales volumes, lending volumes, and asset values all declined in the first quarter of the year and are not expected to pick up so long as interest rates remain high. Okay, this is kind of like a little bit of divergence here. Um, but the fundamentals of the economy, okay, so job numbers still remain strong. That's awesome. I was talking about yesterday how the increase in credit, right, is stabilizing, and I had this like feeling that maybe it was a little bit more V-shape, right? So you had like people higher up um, in the economic ladder were being able to maybe like reduce the amount of credit they were taking on and that people lower down were increasing their credit. And that's actually what is happening. Um, and this is from CNBC. This was published yesterday uh, about noon. Americans are spending big with credit cards, okay? It, anyways, I'm, I'm kind of going on a diatribe here, but we'll get back to this. <laughs> we'll get back to this after the break. Stay tuned, guys. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, to take a short break, what we were talking about uh, before the break, um, in the den, 
Elu2, Eluto. Yeah. He shared um, a little story, uh, story uh, basically about what's happening in Ukraine, right? So as everything's getting messed up there, and this happens a lot, right? It seems like farmland and other kind of assets are being consolidated uh, by uh, wealthy people over there and by institutions here. This happened in Germany, of course, um, after the war, uh, where you had a consolidation of uh, everything, basically, uh, to American industry and, and some of the Western Germans. Uh, very interesting. I, my grandfather was actually involved in that, and that's a whole other story that I won't go into right now, but um, he shed some light into what that was like after you know, the war and the, and the split Germany and kind of how the economy operated after that. Super interesting. However, it reminded me of this story uh, that came out, and this is awesome. You know, I am a finance major with like a focus on economics, and so we, in the groups that we would have in, uh, in college, we also were mixed with the accounting people. And I'm sure they probably thought the finance guys ate crayons or something like that. Um, but this made me feel a little bit vindicated today uh, because the Pentagon overestimated the value of weapons for Ukraine by $3 billion. And that's just pretty nuts. The error occurred by incorrectly using the cost of replacing the weapons sent from U.S. stockpiles with new equipment. So basically, they didn't account for the depreciation of basically the weapons that they had, right? So you had like an RPG that was 300 bucks five years ago, and now you have new stuff, so it's 200. They were still charging it at $300. Um, who knows what that allowed to have happened, right? Like, so how do you base her on that? Obviously, we do the Lend-Lease Act for Ukraine, uh, so that might have increased the debt on paper for them, uh, but pretty significant, especially when you're in a world where the Pentagon just messed up their, uh, <laughs> oh, I can't think of the word now for some reason. Um, basically, when, when all their books got analyzed, why can't I think of the word? Very common word. Um, anyways, pretty pretty interesting to see what happens, and uh, it, it's just nuts. And what they're saying now is there's three billion more that they can send be to Ukraine because of this accounting error, right? And we take a look at it. What is really really the true cost, right? Like Ukraine is in a rock and a hard place, right? Like what are you going to get taken over by Russia? Like no, but now you're like extraordinarily indebted uh, to foreign nationals as well and for, foreign foreign um, corporations. So. It's interesting uh, to see what happens. Committed since last year, February, uh, some 37 billion in lethal aid to Ukraine. That's pretty insane. Yeah, wow. All right, I'm gonna hop back to this just real quick, give you the full numbers. The national office vacancies reached 19% in the first quarter of 2023, huge, uh, with some properties in San Francisco and other areas trading at what appears to be massive discounts. And the reason why I'm like really focusing on this and, and why I'm drilling it in is again, because we've been talking about this idea of everything being virtualized, right? And that is really how I see in the next decade, if you could virtualize it, right? Like you virtualized your oven, it's going to be virtualized, okay? Uh, I, I really think this. However, there is a caveat to this, right? And it's what, again, we were talking about is security. When you virtualize things, you open up uh, more room for things to be uh, uh, basically taken advantage of by threat actors, okay? And so this is why I say at least in like the IT world, um, certainly things like cybersecurity or just net security in general, um, I don't think things like chat GPT will be an immediate issue. And why do I say that? So for instance, Samsung was using chat GPT uh, to write code uh, for their new update, right? This gets, where is that code stored? Again, we're going through this. It gets stored on some other server that doesn't belong to them and they don't have control over. That server got breached and basically the code for Samsung got breached as well. And then therefore there was a, uh, uh, there was a hack, right? And so this is a serious issue where you're like, if you're thinking of something as sensitive as like your source code for updates um, or things like security, right? Like if you're looking at a network um, and you're using ChatGPT to do so, that information is all being sent somewhere. And so what I really see happening probably um, after a while, and again, I'll, just to add on to what I'm saying is, is for instance, that, that password locker that just got hacked and everyone's passwords got locked, right? That's what they would teach you 
that you need to do, right? And now it seems like the safest thing to actually do in reality is write it on a sticky note and like put it under your desk or something like that, right? Uh, because everything gets breached. And the more you kind of send out and you delegate security and storage uh, to things that aren't you, you do run a greater risk. And I think that will become a little bit more apparent as time goes on. Uh, but for instance, what Apple's doing, and again, I think this is really what we're going to see um, after everything goes through a massive virtualization period and uh, you know a massive and clouding period. But Apple bans internal chat, chat, chat GPT use. The iPhone maker exploring in-house AI solutions. I would say, yeah, they are. Um, the home server is going to be massive. The DoD already does this, right? They, they haven't really changed. Um, but they're not putting their stuff on the cloud. They're not delegating storage. And of course, that's an extreme example because it's the DoD. But if you, in a world where, again, we were talking about corporate espionage, people get hacked all the time and, and sensitive data is leaked out and that can end up costing companies hundreds of millions of dollars, uh, this is what you have to do. You have to have on-site servers. Same thing with Google. They all have on-site servers. And so what I see happening, at least in the AI realm for business and sensitive business uh, kind of data, is you're gonna see more enterprise level chat GPTs that are novel to the business themselves, right? Like, so you might be sold the bare bones, you know, quote unquote, of the AI, but it's all programmable uh, by you and your company in-house, and you have total control of where that data goes and what it does. Right now, that's not the way that chat GPT works, and um, that's, that's gonna, again, be a major, major problem. So the decision to restrict the use um, of competing LLMs uh, stems from concerns over potential leakage of user data. And that's stated in the report. The tech giant is also reportedly in the process of developing its own similar technology. Additionally, the document stated that Apple instructed its employees to refrain from utilizing uh, Microsoft-owned GitHub's Copilot. That's actually pretty crazy. Um, and that's a software code writing automation tool. Again, that was a major issue that Samsung ran into and they got you know, bitten by it. ChatGPT developed um, from OpenAI, the chatbot based on LLM uh, capable of responding to queries, generating essays, we all know this. However, the utilization of such models involves the transmission of data back to the developers, again, outside of uh, your company. Uh, this practice raises concerns regarding the inadvertent disclosure of confidential information by organizations. So. You know, again, I, for, the, for the common person, this is huge. And we already know that companies are, I mean, obviously your big tech are, but like things like well, we, a major breach, let's look at Target, right? They had a, they had a major breach of uh, sensitive customer data. It seems like this, this desire for security is kind of overlooked by a lot of companies. So we might really see um, some more major hacks uh, and, and kind of exploits occur from this exact route. And so I would keep an eye open for that. Folks, stay tuned, we'll be right back. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's Daily Market Newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Yeah, so just to wrap up, Apple still up today. Apple releasing that kind of thing, which uh, that, that structure, which I think really is going to be the future. Um, they're just ahead of the game. I, th I think Buffett and Munger added a ton more today. Uh, when does it end? I don't know. Um, but if you've been holding Apple, you've been doing all right. Massive, massive company. Um, all right, I want to hop over to an interesting story. This is the IRS uh, from the IRS. It flagged over 1 million tax returns. Uh, for review citing possible identity theft, whoa. Um, the Treasury Inspector General for Tax Administration's interim results of the 2023 filing season, uh, which it released May 10th, cited 1.1 million identified as of March 2nd that warranted a closer look. The IRS stated that thus far they have confirmed that 12,617 of the tax returns were fraudulent, and they prevented the distribution of refunds totaling $105.3 million. Uh, during the last tax year, I mean, that's pretty significant, right? Uh, just for that number, and they still have so many to go. Uh, during the last tax year, the IRS only identified 9,600, 9,600, as confirmed fraudulent returns, uh, with the 2023 filing period already seeing around, it. yeah, obviously a 3,000 jump. Uh, the Inspector General for the Treasury, excuse me, uh, went on to explain that these filters consist of reported income, withholding amounts, filing requirements, excuse me, filing requirements, age, filing history, and prison status. Um, if a tax return is flagged by an agency filter, the IRS will not process it until the taxpayer's identification has been verified. This is pretty insane. There's another thing recently, that, not extraordinarily related, but in some capacity it is. Uh, this actually happened to one of my friends. I was talking with them, and they were planning on making a huge trip, and for whatever reason, they checked their credit karma, right, um, to see what their credit was. I don't know why they were looking at it, but they had a bunch of updates that they were dead, uh, that they were deceased, and that someone's opening up new loans in their names, and he started panicking, and I'm looking at it, and I'm like, oh, that is not good, man. He called Equifax, um, was on the phone forever, and it turns out that it was a small glitch on credit karma's side, which, like, not really a small glitch, right? That was pretty nuts, but... Having your identity taken and it's being used for this purpose is just a nightmare. Uh, I did have a friend who actually recently, and her identity was actually stolen, and it has just been a miserable experience. All right. Uh, Europe approves uh, the world's first cryptocurrency regulations. America, well, we'll get to this. Uh, the European Union has approved a set of rules, such as the, excuse me, the first such regulation in the world to regulate crypto assets like cryptocurrencies and tokens in a bid to curb money laundering activities and protect investors. Obviously, there's a lot of that in Europe. Well, it's maybe a bit more apparent over there. Um, but the market in crypto assets legislation was approved on May 16th. The new rules will increase transparency and create a comprehensive framework for businesses operating in crypto markets. Okay. 
Again, this is like what happens sometimes, and, and regulation for stuff, you know, can be positive, but obviously you had like abuses because of FTX and Alameda and stuff like that, uh, and, and that was a major issue. But if you're if you're trying to curb like actual, you know, what they're calling like gang activity and stuff like that, these guys aren't using Bitcoin, and what you're doing is just regulating you know, above ground like financial companies and stuff like that. Um, again, FTX, that would have that would have been nice to have some oversight. Um, Block five, for instance, three arrows, but you're not gonna get rid of that like really dark underbelly. Like what FTX was doing, yeah, was totally illegal and fraudulent and criminal, but like that's not the company that's using crypto in order to shift drugs over borders or, you know, human traffic, et cetera. And that's really what I think uh, will be important to focus on in the future after this gets pushed out. Um, what's interesting, I think, you know, America is always a little bit late. This is a little diversion of what we're talking about. Um, but America is always a little late um, regarding some of the uh, regulations that they choose. And I was watching this documentary last night about a guy named Harvey Wiley. He was born in the late 1800s and he became a chemist and a doctor. And uh, he was the big push. Uh, like, if you're familiar with that, with the book *The Jungle* by Upton Sinclair, right? It was talking about like the meat packing um, district and how just like abysmal the conditions were and how unsafe they were. This came out during a time where this guy Harvey Wiley, this ended up creating the FDA, um, was like, "Hey, man, our food is totally adulterated. It's not good. Stuff's full of borax, salicylic acid. This messes you up." in a major way. He had a group known as the Poison Squad, and it was a bunch of young, fit men, and he just fed them like <laughs> just borax, boric acid, and salicylic acid. And uh, it took forever um, to get Congress out of the grips of basically the big food producers. And uh, it, it led to Teddy Roosevelt. Uh, he was the one who finally pushed through regulation after years of him being in charge. The reason why I also bring that up, which is super interesting, I'm trying to see this here, I don't think I pulled it up. Give me a moment. But it was, you know, I love, I love bringing up some of the uh, new scientific discoveries and everything like that. Um, yeah, I don't have it up. But this is a, you know, we're kind of like re-seeing or, you know, we're revisiting a time like that, right? Like history kind of repeats itself in a way. And what this study was showing, and Tommy was talking about it a little bit um, the other day and some people in the den as well, but you know, I think we all know this, like, you know, instinctually, but, you know, we finally have some really good data coming out that consumption of ultra processed foods is associated with depression, mesocortical limbic volume, which shrinks the area that uh, has to do with uh, basically dopamine production uh, and inflammation and ultra processed consumption was associated with depressive symptoms associated with lower volumes in the mesocortical limbic brain region. This can also affect, um, that affects like executive functioning, again, uh, um, dopamine reward systems. Uh, and again, like this, this is something that's not super regulated, right? This is so prominent, just like it was back at the turn of the last century, prominent among poor Americans. They're the ones who are eating ultra processed foods. And uh, we've been talking about it for so long and it seems like not much has been done. Europe has like some pretty strict regulations, at least on the consumption of food. And you know, you can say like regulations stem uh, business and, and to some extent that's true. That was the argument they were using back at the turn of the century where they were putting, again, like high levels of very destructive chemicals and adulterants into food. I think we're gonna see the, I think on, the, on history, UPF will be looked at this as well, ultra processed foods. Um, again, this disrupts amygdala and hippocampal complex, and what that does is essentially makes you, when you, males, when they have shrunken uh, amygdalas, uh, become far more aggressive, right? And so we have issues like, does this add to crime and everything? Um, it's super interesting, and, you know, I think it, it, going forward in the future, if this uh, really continues to take more, this, this pure foods, foods kind of movement, um, looking into investing in companies that are really heavy on that, and in a serious way, you know, um, I think that's going to be massive. What happened at the turn of the last century is when these companies um, like Armour, who, who were doing uh, uh, meat production, they got stomped out. And the companies that were doing just pure foods, right, that were clean and had, they took off in value in a major way. 
and we still have some of them around today, Nabisco number one, right? Anyways, super interesting. I'll share that in the den um, and in the YouTube if anyone wants to take a look at it. Um, but uh, history repeats itself, folks. I mean, seriously, right? And we got to be aware of what we're, we're, we're eating, and we have to be knowledgeable. We got to be players in the in the country and democracy, folks. Stay tuned. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN com You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. To wrap up the show, we have Tom O'Brien on the line. Tom, how are you doing? Can you hear me? Jacob. Jacob. Uh, Tom, how are you doing? I'm doing great, man. I got to tell you a story. This is crazy. I just heard you talking about boric acid, right? Yeah. So, when are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. So, Perfect. when I was in the hot dog business, okay, this, this is 1976, right? I used to smell like a hot dog every day. <laughs> I'd, speak, I'd had about I had about five or ten fans in in Boston, right? So one day, I I, I normally would go. We actually had a huge meat packing center, and that's where I'd pick everything up, right? Okay. One day we we run out. I got to go up and get a thousand hot dogs, right? So. At that particular point, there's still enough butcher shops in Boston, right? Yeah. I go up to this butcher shop who I'd done business with before, okay? The bottom line, it was a holiday. He says, oh, no, 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 I, I get hot dogs, I get hot dogs, don't worry. He goes in the freezer, right? Takes out hot dogs, 
Uh, now, I'm there. This is how crazy this butcher was, right? Opens the boxes. The boxes, the hot dogs are totally, um, you know, uh, red. I mean, not red. They're totally blue, okay? Oh, my God. And with bacteria, right? Oh, and I look at him, and so he goes, he goes over to um, the he goes over to uh, the sink, right? Puts water in the sink, puts the hot dogs in the sinks, and puts boric acid in the sink. Jeez. Okay. Now this is what happens, folks. Okay, you you get off the bacteria, and then those hot dogs look like someone on steroids afterwards. They look so good. So is that sick or what? Unbelievable. Okay? And. and it is, I, I mean, let me tell you something, man. I left that place. I I just couldn't believe it, man. Um, and I needed hot dogs, but of course I didn't buy them. But yeah. what I heard you just mention that is plenty of people that don't realize what boric acid can do. The piece of meat looks amazing. Yeah, amazing. yeah, and they're feeding and that to anyone. It. I said, oh my God, this is going to kill people, right? Yeah. It's crazy, right? It's insane. Um, it's insane. Yeah, yeah it. no, and they're feeding it to everyone. It's go, nuts. Great thank, show, Jacob. thank you, Tom. Go get them. See you now, <laughs> Thanks, folks. Man. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, stay tuned. We got Steve up next. Um, and have a great rest of your week. And Tom uh, Basil will be 